Part two, the uh, the Sarah Gonzalez expose. <laughs> Wait, uh, we didn't we didn't expose anything in the last episode, but oh boy, I, do I have some stuff to expose! I, I would love for you to expose it all. Mm. Um, it's fun. Um, let's keep talking about insane things. So, uh, get back to a couple of clips here. I want to. Uh, by the way, Sarah, you're lovely. Thank you. You are lovely. I appreciate that. And uh, someone said the other day that. Uh, and I needed to quit flirting with you. Oh my God. And I said, over my dead body. <laughs> it's just the relationship we have. I don't think I flirt with you. I don't think about it like that. I don't either. I don't even, it doesn't even cross my it's, mind. It, it cracks me up though when people think that they need to. Do people tell you that you're a flirtatious person naturally? Because I am. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but it's not, but it's not, that's what you're, it's yeah, I'm not, not coming flirting. on to right, anyone. Right, right. It's not flirting. I'm just yeah. very friendly and. I think that's confused people over the years. They think that I'm coming on to them. I'm not. Yeah. I'm just very friendly. Right. And I'll do anything in the world for anybody. Yeah. But, and, and I'm very outgoing. Yeah. Like and, if... I, and I'm available to kiss. Like if you just want to <laughs> walk up and bam, there it is. Well, I'm not. But if you, um, you know, if you go to a, an airport bar, like I'm talking to the person next to me. Yeah. We're going to become 100%. best friends I've by the end I've made really good friends And it's at always men. Bars. And some I've kissed. <laughs> yeah. The men too? The men too. Okay. <laughs> Did you see the Elvis movie? Uh, No. The newest one? No. Well, you know, there's a part of it, and this doesn't give anything away, where he's walking around. Because Elvis would walk, he'd just kiss his fans. Like right oh, on the mouth. Yeah, you know, yeah. he'd walk out in the audience and just be, I mean, he'd lay it on them, smack yeah. down. And uh, open mouth. French. Wow. Yeah. That yeah. is. And I forgot that he did that, though. Like, there's a scene in the movie where he's walking around yeah. and he's doing that. And just like, you forgot that he That's weird. That. Well, it's not. I do it all the time. <laughs> I have never seen you do that at one of your shows. I've done it. I've done it. I've walked around. Quite honestly, I'll be just, honest with you. I did. They just let you do it. <laughs> you just grab them by the pooty poo. They just let you do it. Um, now I've had some ladies that have walked up and tried. Yeah, I mean, people can mistake your. I have been friendliness and and pretty much every show I've ever done, every meet and greet I've ever done. Hmm. Brandon, that's disgusting. Be Being with groped you. is. These old ladies like to be handsy, but I've never, I've never claimed sexual harassment or anything. Listen, I'm dumpy. I take it where I can get it. <laughs> the puppet master Mark and let's love Brandon at the nether regions helm. <laughs> We're there. We're not going to the nether regions. We're already there. We're already there. Of insanity. We've been there. So uh, I'm going to be in Godly, Texas Saturday night. Uh, full grope. I'm going to be there in Godly. <laughs> Del Norte Tacos. Uh, so there's room. They can put 800 1100 people in that place and so wow. anyway put a lot of people in there and it'd be me steve and ben so that's our acoustic version we are the ragamuffins me steve and ben well there's chad somebody said to me the other day why do you say chad prather and the ragamuffins why don't you mm. just say rascal flats because rascal flats sucks <laughs> <laughs> can you imagine if it was randy owens in alabama well if Randy Owens had all the following, that's what I. Yeah, that's and and that's no disrespect because you work with some no, of the most talented musicians. They are out the there. most talented but musicians out there. Why would but, they? Why would you not use your personal but recognition? They're booking me. I'm right. bringing the band. Right. So if I don't put it out there, it's just like when we list new music, like I got over you when you got over under him. Uh, when we list the music on iTunes or Spotify, Chad it has Prather to be Chad Prather and, and the Ragamuffins. Yes. Now we tried just doing the Ragamuffins. But there's other bands over the years that have been ragamuffins, and you can't find our stuff. You know what? It's funny you say that, because I actually, before you told me when you were planning to release I yeah. Got Over You and You Got Under Him, I went and looked for it because I was singing it in my head and wanted to, like, satisfy my own, you know. Um, and so I went and I searched for it, and there were a couple different, like, ragamuffin bands that showed well, up and I the couldn't. old christian band rich mullins had the ragamuffins it was rich okay. mullins but his band was called the ragamuffins yeah. so people who know rich mullins who got killed i think in 94 wow in an auto accident um and uh, he was greatness but and i didn't even think about that till after because we just kind of on a whim started calling it the ragamuffins right, right but i'm but i mean i couldn't find i didn't type in the name of the song i just typed in ragamuffins and it didn't show it didn't even pull up chad prather in the ragamuffins right so yeah <laughs> so now we have to list all the music as chad prather yeah and the ragamuffins so usually if, is that way if you look up chad prather it'll show up so i tell that person i was like when you market something successfully get back to me why are people so, like sometimes you go why are you spending your time and energy 
worrying about what I call my band. Yeah. It just blows my mind sometimes. Oh, there's people what who are people... upset. You're stealing the name Ragamuffins. No, there's been half a dozen bands of note over the years that use the word Ragamuffins in there. I just happened to say one day in my townhouse, I, I said to Steve Helms, you're a ragamuffin. And he didn't know what that was. He oh, goes, what's funny. a ragamuffin? He didn't know? And I said, look it up. Steve. And so that's why I said, we're going to call it the ragamuffins. That's funny. The other name was the corn cobwebs. No, I'm glad you stuck with We stuck with ragamuffins. Yeah, good, I just good call. Thought, I've always thought corn cobwebs was a funny phrase. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. <laughs> it's a little weird. But, uh, but now people, it's caught on. Yeah. You know, across the board, people in Nashville, people across Texas, they'd ask about the ragamuffin. Do you remember how the ragamuffins, we, right before we started taping this, they they called me about doing San Antonio Rodeo. And of course, wow. you know, they want Chad Prather and yeah. the ragamuffins. Yeah. yeah. And I like taking them with me when I can. Well, they like you taking them with you as well. We need a bus sponsor is what we need. I'll take yeah, them everywhere. Okay. People say, why don't you, just like people say, why don't you offer 4X shirts? Well, we are making a change. We'll be offering 4X shirts because I'm switching all my distribution <laughs> over and I'm going to be saving some money. Me too. Uh, but it's like, it costs a lot of money to carry 4X shirts. Yeah. And there's not enough people buying them. As it turns out, that's a lot more fabric. It's a lot it's more a fabric. a lot more material. It's like people are like, we don't understand why you don't carry 5X shirts. I said, why don't you buy a 2X and a 3X, cut them and sew them together. <laughs> That's a tent. Yeah. No, no offense, but that's a big shirt. It's a big shirt. It's a lot of it's a lot of ink. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot. lot of print. It's, a, it's a lot of shelf space. And, yeah. You know, we have to and cost a little again, extra for what we sell half a dozen of that size all year long, mm -hmm. and I'm supposed to carry you know a couple dozen of those at all. Day. No. But why don't you cater specifically to me, Jack? Because I do, and <laughs> I, I do very much so. But my thing is, we don't cater. To the small percentage. Right. See, that's that's the difference with the world these days. Sure is. The world today thinks you've got to make this, that small percentage, that subcategory mm -hmm. of the small percentage, the focus. Mm -hmm. Whether they're identity, pronoun, gender, mm -hmm. whatever, trans issues. we got to focus on those marginalized people. No, maybe the marginalized people need to catch up with the rest of the world yep. and understand that the world doesn't cater to you. Now, I'm not being mean, but this is going to sound mean. If you wear a 5X, maybe drop it down to three. <laughs> now, that's going to cost you something, just like you're asking it to cost me something. Right. So let's just be fair. <laughs> if you're wearing a 5X for your health and my budget, drop it down to 3X. <laughs> you make the sacrifice, not me. I shouldn't have to cater to your to lack you. of sacrifice. It's true. Now, people don't like hearing that this day and age. It's how I raise my kids. I don't expect them to be catered to. Mm -hmm. You go freaking get it. Yep. Right? So now that's a minute example <laughs> that will give me a lot of hate, but I'm okay with it. Go to where a podcast are offered, leave a five-star review. Leave a three. I don't care. No. But uh, leave a five-star five. review and tell me how much you hate being 5X. Because <laughs> you do. Because you do. I hate being 2X. But I am. You know, no, you're not. I'm a 2X. Oh, stop. No, you're not. Of course I am. He's not a 2X. This is a 2X shirt. It's I carry very it well. large on you. Okay. I carry well, it well. I just, it, it drives me nuts too when people, <laughs> now, that we're, now that we're talking about obesity, let me just say. Okay. Um, Where are we? It, <laughs> Let's go with it. Well, when people say you like. You were fat. I was fat. So I, I, I lost 100 pounds. So I Good feel like God. I could, Yeah, I was fat, fat. Yeah. Obese fat. What did that? What did what? Made you fat. Food? Food. <laughs> Fast food. Yeah. Tends to do that. Fast food's what makes me fat. Yeah, I know. Tends to do that. But mm -hmm. I love my breakfasts. But everyone says like, oh, well, why don't you mind your business? And it's like, do you know the hundreds of millions of dollars that we're all spending yeah. uh, in the healthcare system because it's a problem? See, my it's doctor, I use a concierge doctor. I talk to him on the phone every couple of months for yeah. an hour and a half, however long I need. But he's no That's nonsense. That's a long time. He's no, huh? That's a long time. Well, we catch up. <laughs> I guess you and, do. Uh, and uh, I go get all these blood panels. He looks at them. Yeah. Like, this is to me how medicine should be. Yes. Like, he looks at all the blood. They know everything from the blood. Yeah. Like, um, biology is an amazing thing, right? They can look at the blood. They know everything about you. I've never met him face to face. He's in Maryland. Wow. At Life Med Institute, if you want to look them up, especially if you're a man, look up Life Med Institute, Dr. Whips, Dr. Randolph Whips. Wow. W-H-I-P-P-S, Dr. Randolph Whips. That's a cool name. Yeah, he was a, he was a, he's a cardio uh -huh. 
uh-huh. uh, doctor, but he went into specializing on on people's issues, specifically men. Mm-hmm. It's not a it's not a you know <clears throat> an erection doctor. He's not that. He's a legit <laughs> doctor. He'll do all that for you. Why did you feel the need to preface it with he's not an erection? Because when you doctor. say man doctor, you think <laughs> it's all about getting your heart on, right? Yeah. It, and you know, he, he, but he's honest to God. He's a good doctor. So we'll sit on the phone. We'll talk about stuff. He can look at your blood. He looks at it. He looks at my blood. He knows I'm a guy. Right. Yeah. <laughs> he knows how much basic. He can pretty much tell me how much I weigh. Wow. And he's never weighed me, but he can pretty much tell me. And he says to me words, big words, like he's like, "You suffer from metabolic syndrome." I said, "You're saying I'm fat." <laughs> He's like, I said, what do we do? He goes, well, it's a bitch. It's a bitch. And it's hard work to get it off. And yeah. you've known me enough years. You've seen my weight up, down, yes, up, down. Yes. You've seen me where you're like, you're too skinny. And then you've seen me where you're like, mm, you, you look good, <laughs> which is a way of saying I'm fat. You look good. No. Yeah. Well, I've, I've been trying to encourage you on, like, yeah. to stay on track. I, yeah. And I, but I do, I do stuff like people are all about giving me a hard time because I take the stuff from Alpha Elite Performance, uh-huh. their greens, their sleep aid, as well as their, uh, their, the thin, thermogenic, the f- thermogenic stuff. Oh my God. I could not believe. Well, that was their high, high dose. That's not what comes in the bottle. Good Lord. But you should take that a couple times a week. If, if you're working out, I if want you're working to. out, you should take it because it's going to make you sweat. I want to. And uh, their stuff, you can go to alphaeliteperformance.com, use promo code CHAD and buy it. I feel like I might die if I do. No, it doesn't get, it doesn't make you jittery. Now, the word okay. fin is in the, it's yeah, called yeah. the alpha fin. There's no fin fin in it. Right. And a lot of people came at me because, oh my God, you're dude selling oh, stuff that's killing that. people. It's not, it doesn't make you jittery. It's not, it's thermogenic. It that's makes not, you sweat. You're not allowed to sell that anymore. Right. Like it's, that's not on the market. Yeah. So. <laughs> so. But I encourage people to do that. You know, we advertise the Chamonix, the Nusu stuff uh-huh, here. Uh-huh, Nusu is a great uh-huh. product yep. on there. Yep. And uh, but but get the weight off because that does matter. Mm-hmm. I mean, it, it's it's you know if you're gonna your cholesterol, your insulin, everything, all of it, you, your heart disease comes from that middle core of your body. That's where your blood passes through. That's the highway for the blood, right? The core of your body, it picks up all that crap you're not getting rid of, like that fat uh-huh. and cholesterol, and it's, yep. boom, it's right to your heart. You know, I um, I had high cholesterol even after I lost all the weight. I still had high cholesterol for a, like years. I do. I have to take a deal. Look at you. There you are. Look at oh you. Oh my God, you found it. <laughs> Thicker than a snicker. <laughs> That's me, the number ten. In by the way, very large print. I probably had to pay extra for that. I knew you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you for a year, and I like I could not find you in there like I, yeah. I, I was like trying to find so now i know you so well that i'm like yeah i got you but like that did not look anything like you. no well especially because i mean people accuse me of getting a nose job all the time and i'm like first of all if i had gotten a nose job this nose would be straight i promise you but it no it's just fat yeah. like it's just fat it just changes your entire but face. you lose the weight it's amazing it changes everything everything you know? every I, I lost a half a shoe size yeah i, I can wear my hats fit better yeah. When you lose weight. Yes. Yeah. I mean, it changes everything. Can I, and listen, when I, why, I was an Why af- is it still on the screen? It's <laughs> <laughs> thicker than a snicker, boy. You all snuggly soft. But so I heart disease runs in my family. Yeah. And my biological father, um, who I don't really speak to, but he had a like quadruple bypass at 50, I think. So they told me at that time. Heart disease that in is this is a very genetic form of this. Like you need to be careful. And so since then it really stuck with me. And I I ate I wouldn't say I was vegan. I ate vegan for like six months before I got pregnant with uh, my older one because I wanted mm. to because I knew that that was a very good way to like reset my cholesterol. And it did. It dropped it. And it's been good since. But like there are small changes that you can make. Yeah, to- there are. I, I take a very small statin, but you got to take some niacin and, and yeah. a lot of, uh, uh, you know, stuffed fiber and things like that. Because right. I have I have genetically high. Yeah. Cholesterol, yeah, triglycerides. Yeah, so I have to be me real too. careful with all of that stuff. Yeah. It's scary stuff. Yeah, we're getting older, and uh, anyway, uh, what are we talking about? Oh, First Liberty. I love those guys because um, <laughs> they're they're doing something powerful. Listen, when it comes to the liberals in Congress, they would never accept term limits on themselves. But that's what they're doing. They're fighting tooth and nail to impose term limits on Supreme Court justices. We can't have this, folks. We cannot have it. It's completely hypocritical of them, and of course, we don't expect any different. 
uh, from them. But, you know, they do whatever it takes to seize more power, even if if it means purging the Supreme Court of its most experienced justices. Uh, To no one's surprise, their new court purging scheme would remove long-serving conservative justices first. Folks like Sam Alito and Clarence Thomas, they'd get rid of those guys. And not only do they want to purge it, they want to pack it. And they, they want to replace them with new justices who's just going to rubber stamp their radical agenda. And trust me, it's radical. Uh, Democrats, they are working hard to pass the court purging with term limits. We need to work even harder to stop it. Uh, Or the Supreme Court, as we know it, will never be the same. So if you care about the integrity of the Supreme Court and don't want to see it taken over by political hacks, visit SupremeCoup.com. Don't misspell that. SupremeCoup.com. SupremeCoup.com. We'll be right back. If you guys only knew what we talked about off air. Uh, yeah. We take a break, and I always pick up my phone. I look at the text messages that are there, and I'm like, guys, come on. Come on. I just had uh, 20 just in between the two segments. It's insane. (laughs) It's insane. uh, I'll look at it sometimes. It'll be 28 different people texting me. And I'm like, do y'all not work? (laughs) No. Here's the thing. Here's the thing that bothers me. Like, I love to market, I love to sell, I love to promote. It's my thing. It's what I get off on. Somebody says, what drives you? That's what drives mm-hmm, me. Mm-hmm. I love to influence the, the, the vocabulary, the narrative. I love, I love when I change people's vocabulary. My buddy Steve Helms, uh, he's going to be playing the National Finals Rodeo, NFR. He's playing at the Westgate Hotel out there, which that's Elvis's hotel, by the way. That's, Ragamuffin that's, number one. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the Texas legend, Steve Helms. So they hired him to come out there and play the pre-rodeo party every night, all yeah. 10 days of the rodeo. And so that's a big thing. It's an honor to go out there and do that. But they reached out to him and they said, we want to hire the Texas legend. And so that's my that's nickname cool. for Steve. That just catches yeah, on. You that's know? really cool. So I love that kind of thing. But what drives me crazy is when somebody – they write a book or uh, they come up with a product or whatever. And, and I'm like, look, I'll help you promote that. Mm-hmm. And then they want to drive me crazy because it's like, did you guys not have any other marketing plans <laughs> than just me? Because if it's I just me, help. it's going to fail. Yeah. No. Well, I wouldn't say that. Well, you're not going to get what you, you I wouldn't build a business and just hope that my social media. <laughs> right. Is going to be what helps build your business, right, right? right? If I knew how to do that, if I had that silver bullet, you would do it. Yeah. Which, by the way, uh, if you go to watchchad.com, you click over in that store, use promo code thirty three sale, thirty three percent off everything in the store right now. Wow. Biggest sale I've ever had. Wow. Um, and I'd be remiss if I didn't tell you to go to um, chadonblaze.com, do a little shopping over there. Okay. I think there's going to be some changes around here. I don't know, but I hear whispers mm-hmm. that the Blaze is about to get pretty heavy into the uh, t-shirt business oh, in the marketing going all in that kind of thing i hope they do yeah i hope they do because i want to be able to have more offerings you know what i mean i completely agree i'm a t-shirt guy. i got been, a lot of i got a lot of ideas swirling see, in my head that i have I'm not been putting to... out yeah i hadn't been putting out new t-shirt ideas yeah. lately because it's just been the snafus in business well, but, you know my t-shirt ideas that i'm just oh i do just sit on them just and, and they're coming because i I am a t-shirt person. I, I've been selling t-shirts since I was in college. Mm-hmm. I'd get a box of them printed up, and I'd go out on campus, and I'd sell them to people. Just hold them out. That's funny. People loved them. Wow. So that's how I made extra money. My father, God rest him, uh, my father gave me $25 a week um, when I was in college. That was my allowance, $25 a week off oh at college. Oh, my God. Did it, did it last you? No. Oh. I amazingly made it last better than... Well, I'm just thinking this $25 was, this was today. This early 90s. Yeah, $25 today is not the same thing as $25 right. in the early so 90s. So I could get gas for, yeah. you know, dollar a gallon, mm-hmm. maybe on the high side. Um, you know, Food was cheaper. Yeah, a lot of ramen noodles. Mm-hmm. It's in college, Rent's right? Rent's cheaper. Everything's cheaper. And, but, I, but now, to be fair, I was on a, I, well, like my freshman year of college. No, that's not true. A lot of it, I used the cafeteria meal plan. At college, yeah. I would go to the cafeteria. God, so that stuff was nasty. So, so I did have that. I, I wasn't starving, right? You know, and I was on scholarship, so they took care of me pretty well. But you know, to have gas and you want to go out with your buddies. So, like at Georgia, <clears throat> on Thursday nights, you went to Lowry's because that was nickel night. 
So they had all the old stale keg beer from the nights before the last week and they'd fill up your little cup for a nickel for a nickel oh we got hammered drunk wow that's yeah. a steal yeah and then there was the sugar bowl that's uh, all these bars are still there they're under different names and rather than playing good old music like they used to with live two and three piece bands they had now it's, ooh, 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 ooh. No, nobody wants to go in there because you get a japanese anime seizure from all the lights <laughs> but uh back then it was a lot of fun you could go hear widespread panic and, oh cool and rush and our and the B-52s and, you know, all these different folks that were out there. The uh, Georgia Satellites, you could catch a bunch of them that, That's were, awesome. that were there. So anyway, I could list them off. Gives me all nostalgic. Yeah. But yeah, but, but Sugar Bowl on Monday nights was dollar Bud Lights. You could get a bottle for a dollar. Wow. But now if you only got 25 bucks a week, you that dollar is going to go pretty quick. That goes in one night. Yeah. So that's why what you did was you found out who had the keg, what fraternity had the keg, and or whose apartment had a keg and you went out yeah. and you drank until like used to be when i was in high school they wanted me home about 12 12 30 right right that's my right. curfew yeah me too shit we didn't go out till 11 o'clock it's so funny whenever i end up spending time with people who are younger yeah because i'm like you're not going until 10 i'm yeah. out <laughs> like right <laughs> now my when bedtime we have gigs now See, like we play, like the beauty of doing comedy is you can do a 7.30, 8 o'clock show. Yep. You're out of there by before 10. Right, right. But every now and then we'll play these music festivals or concerts with the band and they don't want you to come on until 10. Yeah. Oof. And I'm like, me and Steve Helms are like, oh dear, <laughs> sweet, good, merciful Lord. We don't want to do this. I've already been asleep for an hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any I, other at 9 o'clock, I'm winding it up, baby. Um, and yeah isn't it weird the older you get like now i get up at five o'clock in the morning yep. Yep. Four forty-five, i'm awake yep and then eight o'clock at night nine o'clock i'm like okay i'm ready to start bringing it down a notch yeah and they but when they want you to play music so anyway when you're in college they wanted you to go out yeah you, know, you drink you, everybody catch them a good buzz that way they didn't have to pay at the bar right 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 you know yeah. did you ever have a fake id yes yeah did it work yes it did was it good no Mine, mine was, I had a couple of things on the fake ID deal. I, we made, we, in high school, we made them in shop class because we had a laminator <laughs> thing. Yeah, we had a really good laminator and a print thing. Did and your we teacher would, know? Yeah, I think he did. <laughs> uh, and so, like, we would put, we would create college IDs. Yeah. And the college ID doesn't have your birth date on it. <laughs> Right, right, right. So we, I think I had one from like what's now West Georgia University or University of West Georgia. Then it was West Georgia College. That's where my brothers went. So I created that, had a birthday. But you could go to the uh, the Pakistani-owned liquor stores around Augusta, oh. Georgia. Those of you who know Boy Scout Road, you know exactly. We weren't Boy Scouts, but we but they would sell <laughs> us in the drive-through. Uh, we would use that, and then um, That's funny. we were in Hilton Head, South Carolina, one spring break, and we tried to get into a club, and we showed it, and the dude said. Boys, come on. <laughs> come on. So we were like, well, we had one from some state. And he goes, come on. And so he had a little book that had all the IDs. And oh, so we stood there with him looking funny. at him. And he like, we were getting ideas of how to make these IDs. Because like, that was a passion for us back then. <laughs> right? So then, so then two stories. Uh, my, my friend uh, Kristen, who dated my best friend John, uh, she found an ID on the ground. When she was like a, I don't know, sophomore in high school. She was a kid and she found one and it was the girl who looked just like her. Oh, that's funny. Oh, that was money, baby. That's funny. That was money. We got it done. Kristen went to every party. And then, and then my buddy, uh, Jason Ross, who played, um, God bless you, Jason. If you, you're going to get this clip, Jason Ross, who went to the university of Hawaii on a, <laughs> on a football scholarship, wound up playing baseball too. He met his wife. Uh, she was on the volleyball team. And uh, their daughter actually got a gold medal in, in the uh, Olympics gymnastics team uh, a few years back. And so, athletic family. Anyway, he played for the Braves for like 10 years. And so, uh, his brother, Joe, was, they looked exactly alike. They were half black, half Korean. Mm -hmm. So, they looked Hawaiian, basically. Yeah, Beautiful yeah. guys. And so, they, uh, he took Joe's birth certificate to the DMV. And said he lost his deal. Showed him his brother's thing. They pulled up the record. He looked. They looked just alike. So he got his brother's deal. 
Now, where Jason messed up was he had a raid at a bar in Hawaii. They came in there, and he showed them Joe's ID instead of his own, and they took it. So that was the end of that. Oh, no. But that, was the, that was the best ID ever. They took his picture and everything and put it on That there. is so funny. We were scoundrels, I tell you. Yeah, I mean, I was... I didn't use a fake ID until I was already in college. I was probably a, a sophomore in college. But you know college, what's funny? But... By the time I was 21, I didn't drink. Really? I didn't drink. Really? I only drank my freshman year in college. After that, I didn't drink. And I didn't drink you again until it. I was like, I don't know, 30. You must have gone hard in your freshman year. I did. <laughs> I thought I was a professional drinker until I got to the University of Georgia. <laughs> and I discovered those guys were pros. Yeah. Those guys were legit. And so I just, I didn't drink for 10 years. I mean, I didn't touch the stuff. And it just didn't do wow. it. It was just a conviction for me. I didn't want to do it. Wow. And then I went back. And I and people still, I, we joke about drinking more than I drink. Yeah. Right? Yeah. I don't get drunk. I don't get imbalanced. I'll play imbalanced. Can you night. imagine shotgunning a beer? No. I know. I'm like. I was good at it, though. I was really good at I it. I was good at it. Natty but like Light. now doing that, uh, throw it right back up. I had red wine this week, which I should never have. Oh. And I threw that right back up. Did you? Well, it gives me heartburn. Yeah. Anyway, this is a very geriatric show we're doing. <laughs> It really is. Between fat people wanting t-shirts and us and our inability to handle and my incontinence yesterday. Yeah. Uh, and your and your doctor, who is not an erection doctor. Not by an the erection way. doctor. We talk about all kinds of things like microdosing LSD and <laughs> those are fun conversations to have, actually. Like see, like that kind of stuff should be totally legal in the US. I'm fascinated by this because I'm I'm like I'm such a, a straight edge. I mean, I drink I drink, but like, I don't I'm like micro dosing yeah, LSD. I'll tell you all what? about it. I'm going to come back from a break where I'm okay. going to do my monologue and I'll tell you all about micro dosing okay. LSD. Okay. okay. Right. Before that, uh, do you really control your <laughs> retirement money? I love this company. I do too. If you got a 401k or an IRA or similar retirement plan, the government controls it. They decide how much you can borrow and when you must pay it back. You're going to owe taxes, penalties for taking money out too soon, waiting too long. <clears throat> and it's your money. And uh, thanks to the skyrocketing national debt and a Congress that continues to spend like a drunken sailor, who knows how much you're going to have to pay in taxes during retirement that could last 30 years. Bank on yourself. That's the name of the company. Bank on yourself. It's a better way to grow and protect your hard-earned money. This retirement plan alternative has never had a losing year in over 160 years. Guaranteed predictable growth and retirement income with no luck, skill, or guesswork required. Your plan doesn't go backward when the markets tumble. Uh, both your principal and growth are locked in. Tax-free retirement income, you're going to know what your tax rate will be in retirement. Zero under current tax law, which protects you from the coming tax tsunami. Peace of mind. Perhaps the best reason of all, you're going to know the minimum guaranteed value of your retirement savings on the day you plan to tap into them and at every point along the way. You can get a free report with all the details on how to bank on yourself and how their strategy adds guarantees, predictability, and control to your financial plan. Just go to bankonyourself.com slash Chad. That's bankonyourself.com slash Chad. We'll be right back. All right, let's talk about this. This is serious. You know, most of the time, I, I kind of like to come on here and try to be funny, maybe make you think a little bit about a deep topic that we can have fun picking apart. But then every once in a while, I'm forced to wedge myself into public service announcement mode. And while that's a lot less fun, it might be important. So without further ado, I want to take you over to North Carolina, where a babysitter just got sentenced to a minimum of four years in prison for the fentanyl death of a toddler. Now, I know that your first thought uh, is something along the lines of North Carolina. Don't you mean Florida, Chad? Don't you mean California? This sounds something like Florida or California man would do, right? Uh, no, folks, not this time. Haley Godshall of the now, is, she's the now former defendant in question. She's 24 and she's going to prison. But before we shower down upon her all the wrath and disgust that we normally reserve for such occasions and such people, let's take a look at what happened for a minute. Haley was babysitting a friend's baby for the day, but was also hanging out with one of her friends, a girl uh, with the unfortunate name of Daisy Bear. Yeah. According to the timeline of events, they smoked meth together. They picked up the baby and headed to Godshall's home. He fell asleep between them on the couch while they were watching a movie. During this time, Godshall gave her friend some fentanyl. 
They both took it and fell asleep. When they awoke, the baby was unresponsive and was later pronounced dead at the hospital. The cause of death was, you guessed it, a lethal dose of fentanyl. But here's the thing. She didn't just feed him fentanyl, and it was explained in the trial that the baby couldn't have absorbed a lethal dose merely from breathing in particles while the two women were taking it. There just wasn't enough in the air for it to kill him. But here's the thing. Fentanyl, as we know, doesn't take a whole lot to kill a person. A few grains of it can be lethal under the right circumstances, and that's for an adult. This kid could have absorbed it through skin-to-skin -skin contact, sort of like monkeypox, for all we know. Now, I said at the beginning that I have to treat things like this as a PSA. I think the pretty obvious first place to land on is this. Don't do drugs around kids. And especially don't do dangerous drugs that can kill you around them. I'm not advocating that you do fentanyl at all. God knows that stuff is deadly. But if you're going to do them, don't put yourself in a situation where you might accidentally destroy a little life just so you can have some fun. Second of all, and I mean, that stuff should be basic just knowledge. But second of all, and more to the root perhaps of, of the problem, why is fentanyl so prevalent in our society right now? Well, for one thing, it's far more widely available than it used to be. And that's because, ding, 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 our poor is practically non-existent border to the south fentanyl is flooding up through this country like crazy and with massive quantities of a super deadly drug comes you, you guessed it right a whole lot of death and destruction of lives look i'm no prude you know this when it comes to drugs but we've got a problem on our hands that has gotten way out of control and we've got to do something about it we've got to get control of the immigration problem in our society in general and in the specific we've got to find a way to navigate properly through this opioid crisis we can't let things like what happened in carolina become something we're just used to mm. so that's a hard deal in that's fact depressing. you got a clip let's play it right now the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration is warning Americans about an emerging trend in the opioid epidemic, and that is rainbow fentanyl. These brightly colored pills and powders look very similar to candy, even sidewalk chalk, but to be clear, they're dangerous. They contain the highly addictive, highly powerful drug fentanyl. Authorities are really raising awareness around this. They have seized rainbow fentanyl in 18 states. This was reported just last month. So they are reporting that they're seeing more of these types of products out there when it comes to monitoring the opioid epidemic. But what is concerning here, according to drug authorities, is that the rainbow colors could be accidentally appealing to young children. If someone in the home has these products and a child comes across it, there is the risk of accidental exposure. The rainbow colors, some experts say, could be a way to differentiate between different batches of the substance. That's why we could see more of these different colors emerging. But again, Jim, this does seem to be the next thing on drug authorities' radar when it comes to the opioid epidemic. Yeah. And it, again, it's a sad story about what happened in North Carolina. I mean, that's Accidentally? The, yeah. That's the it, whole thing is, is it, the rhetoric around it. Look, you need to name it a weapon of mass destruction. Mm -hmm. Okay. You need to hold China accountable. You need to hold the cartels accountable. There needs to be obviously something done at the border but we got to take action to get the car against the cartels as well um we talked about that already this week I, anyway uh, yeah, it, it, it's, it's a sad deal i mean rainbow fentanyl is not accidentally no. attracting kids that's no. that's the whole point <clears throat> again you got morons like the people who took it right. while they were babysitting a child right and this stuff is deadly. Oh. I mean, there are cops who have had to get Narcan because they arrested somebody and there was fentanyl on their person and they got exposed to it. That is wild. So, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Narcan needs to be more readily available. You shouldn't have to get a prescription to get Narcan. You should be able to go get that stuff. Mm -hmm. it, you know, you should know where in your neighborhood people who have Narcan is, mm -hmm. right? Because, again, people are getting exposed to this stuff. Unknowingly. Unknowingly. Yeah. And you don't need to be doing drugs, which, again, I preceded this whole thing talking about microdosing LSD. <laughs> uh, whoops. There, no, I'm not. It's no whoops. It, there is. There's a fine line there. There yeah. are things. The re, Like fentanyl is used in hospitals right it's it's like a laser right a laser can be used to destroy it can be mm. used to heal mm -hmm. it, it's all in the application of all of these things mm. right um you take marijuana Ma marijuana you know it, it's a shame that that it, it, the culture of it has become what it's become but that is a natural drug there's a healing yeah. quality you can't convince me otherwise there's right. a healing quality to cannabis 
Uh, they used to put cocaine in Coca-Cola. The dentist used to use it to numb your gums. Keith Richards said the biggest drug he misses was pharmaceutical grade cart cocaine. Now God knows what it's stepped with, you know, step, cut with uh, and stepped on with. But uh, they use that. It had a quality to it. And, you know, now you have what you got. You never know what's going to be mixed into any of this stuff. There's a way to to utilize and, and you know, pharmaceuticals and all these kind of things that, unfortunately, we've made them taboo in a certain way. We've put a stigma on a lot of them. Like you take LSD. LSD can be a very dangerous drug, yeah. right? You, and you talk about microdosing. And I know doctors out there who do say it's a good thing. It may be a good thing because it, in a microdose, which it takes about 30 to 40 uh, micrograms in order for you to start getting into a trip. Okay. Right? Okay. But if you take five or six, you're not going to feel any of the effects of that. It's just going to connect the neural pathways that's the theory. It's going to connect the neural pathways in your brain. So it makes you sharper. It makes you sharper. It makes you a little more aware. It makes you a little more creative. Okay. It's going It's going to bring you, it's going to reduce anxiety and stress and things like that. You're not going on a trip. Now, there right. are people who go out there and they will have these weekends where they have monitored trips where they take a higher dosage of this stuff and it's doctor monitored and, and stuff like this in order to try to get some enlightenment and stuff like that i, I know people who have done this doctor monitored yeah yeah they, they, i know i know groups of doctors who have gone out and done it with each other so like one day they monitor and the other day the other group monitors and that kind of thing and they try to get you know the whole thing that is so I'm not wild. advocating for or against it. I'm just saying there are things out there that are going on. People do these things. Are they evil? No, I don't necessarily think they no, are. No, no, no. I just I, don't like not being in control. Well, of... with microdosing, you don't have to worry about it. Right. That's and the same saying. with mushrooms, right? Yeah. You take mushrooms and like, ah, ah, you get the wrong mushroom, it can kill you. But some mushrooms can actually have some healing qualities when it comes to anxiety. Yeah. You start taking lion's mane and psilocybin, and people are going, How the hell does he know so much about this? I'm a doctor. Don't worry about it. <laughs> the, uh, but you have all of this stuff that's out there that in the right dosages can actually be healing for you yeah but again people don't know this because they operate it you know they do it recreationally they do it recklessly and mm -hmm. that's that's not what i'm saying or advocating for in any way shape or form that's fascinating so i'm a fascinating person you are also give me enough lsd and i'll show you yeah also <laughs> drugs are fascinating apparently so fascinating. i just know so little about them fentanyl's a deadly deadly thing well i mean i know that but... yeah but i mean you're comparing apples and oranges in regards to anything to excess including alcohol right including diet soda yeah including fried chicken is deadly yeah right yeah. we just like to pick our poisons that we hate and say oh that thing again some things can be used to heal and some things can be used to destroy fentanyl is the same way administered in a hospital by a medical practitioner those things they could use fentanyl to to heal yeah right and to help instead of harm but you start using this stuff on the street you've got to talk to your kids though folks because mm -hmm. if they're going to go out there and get a adderall or they're going to get a, a a xanax you know or one of those kind of things and they're taking that recreationally that's where it's happening yeah and it's not being reported on to the degree that of the deaths that are happening because of it. Mm. That's the scary part. So talk to your kids. Don't do drugs. Don't but do if, drugs. But if you do drugs, I, know a, guy. Utah, I know a guy. No, go to Utah, get under the night sky, and let a doctor monitor your trip. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There it is. <laughs> Hang tight, be right back. And in conclusion, Joe Biden is on LSD. That's why when he turns to shake hands and there's nobody there, he doesn't understand why they just vanished. Because he saw that little purple dinosaur while he was giving the speech. It was like whispering over his shoulder. Where'd he go? Yeah. He's like, oh, I turned around to say thanks. And poof. He was poof the magic so dragon. So that's Joe Biden with his neural pathways connected. <laughs> yeah, it's scary if you disconnect him. Scary. Uh, I like to give people things to think and talk about, right? Uh, what do we not cover? Let's see. Uh, green energy? No. Uh, let's play the CNN clip about the uh, the doctor pushback on the vaccine. 
I think what this, the advisory committee is going to be voting on later this afternoon is, is are we going to allow distribution of the Moderna vaccine for everybody over 18, of the Pfizer vaccine for everybody over 12? And, and I, what I fear is that they're going to say everybody should get it when, in fact, a healthy young person really is unlikely to benefit from a booster dose. And so I hope they, they target it more specifically to those really who are most likely to benefit from this additional dose. So if they don't, because right now, as it stands, if you are 50 and over, if you have you know, a pre-existing condition, yes, you could be eligible. But otherwise, as you point out, younger people are not. If it is, in fact, authorized, Pfizer would be authorized for 12 and up, as you point out, Moderna 18 and up. Why not get it, right? If it does give you, even if it's a smaller benefit, is there any reason not to get the booster? I think there, that when you're asking people to get a, a vaccine, I think there has to be clear evidence of benefit. And, and we're not going to have clinical studies, obviously, before this launches. But you'd like to have at least human data, people you know, getting this vaccine. You see a clear and dramatic increase in neutralizing antibodies. And then at least you have a correlate of protection against against BA4, BA5. Because if you don't have that, if there's not clear evidence of benefit, then it's not fair, I think, for, to ask people mm-hmm. to take a risk, no matter how small. The benefit should there's be clear. Huh. Yeah. Wow. She didn't like the way that went. No. That, that's not what she wanted. Fascinating. They admit that there is a risk anytime you take a vaccine. Ask Ashton Kutcher. Ask Justin, Justin Bieber. Bieber. Ask uh, Bieber. Bruce Willis. I, They're not reporting on any of these people. Can I? Okay. So can I just, for your viewers who don't know Dr. Paul Offit, just for reference, this guy has been one of the biggest vaccine shills in general. Yeah in the entire industry and i say that only because i'm not going to i'm not going to get you demonetized or kicked off of youtube I don't like make i did any last money time. off of this show anyway I, well i'm just i say that because even this guy who has been the biggest vaccine shill in the country is now saying you know what maybe we should pump the brakes when it comes to the young people in this particular vaccine that's how you know it's bad because this guy is all about vaccines yeah that's well, at some point in time, common sense, <coughs> you They are losing the narrative. Will rule the day, and you just can't justify it anymore. I don't even think it's common sense. I think these people see the writing on the wall, and they don't want to be documented as being on the wrong side of history, and they realize, like, ooh, yeah. I got to start speaking out yeah. against this, this because is, they, I don't want to be in with them. I need to be on the record saying, mm-hmm. oh, wait a minute. Yep. No, that's not just for everybody. Yep. One size doesn't fit all when it comes to medical treatment. Right. Amazing. Or any of the other... Vaccines. I it's just like LSD that. microdosing. <laughs> it ain't for everybody. Maybe instead of going to go get your booster, just microdose with LSD. Yeah, I'm going to buy me a Timothy Leary record and check out. <laughs> Tune in, turn on, and check out. Yeah. Wait, I thought you said it made you sharper. Yeah. Not check out. Well, I mean, it depends on how much you take. <laughs> you take me a high dose of Moderna, get jiggy oh. with it. I like the way it makes my face droop. <laughs> did you see that meme? Um, Jordan yeah. Schachtel posted it. You sent it, it to me. Oh, that's right. I did. You take the mask off and they're... Uh, it was like bringing smiles back and all the smiles. Is that Moderna or Pfizer? Pfizer. It was a Pfizer ad. It was like make, bringing smiles back. They take their mask off and they're all... Uh. <laughs> 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 they're, uh. they all have the Bell's palsy. You could only see half their face <laughs> smiling. <laughs> Yeah. It's a sad deal, man. And and again, I don't want to gloat. I don't want to be a oh I told you so person, but God dang, man. What the hell? I just I re- told you so. Yeah, I just read a um something about it was published in JAMA that it was like, "Oh, by the way, probably you shouldn't uh, breastfeed your infant if you have just gotten mm-hmm. the mRNA vaccine." And it mm-hmm. was one of those moments where you go Actually, in this particular instance, I wish that I didn't have to say I told you so because yeah. this is very uncomfortable. It's very bad. Yeah, it's it's not good, guys. But still, <laughs> fucking told you so. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you, and I didn't need an MD. Like, that's the thing. I'm like, when when do we get our honorary MDs? Like, when do we get when do I get an honorary doctorate for knowing all of this shit before the medical doctors <laughs> told you that it was happening? Well, yeah, I mean... Chad's uncomfortable with what I just and said. No, I'm really not. Okay. I just want to say some things that I think maybe we should say for our overtime oh. segment. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Like, That's you know, fair. how simple it is to be a doctor, really. Right. I'm not saying I'm doing brain surgery. I mean, again, that's that's a fine-tuned skill. 
that kind of thing. But but a lot of times you go see your family physician and he's he's like, you know, I'll be right back with you. He goes right to the computer. <laughs> yep, yep, yep. Which drug can I prescribe you that will mask this symptom that you're having? Yeah. Oh, that one? Great. And I also get a kickback from uh, the pharmaceutical company if I sell enough of these. So this is great. Yeah. Wow. Don't forget to subscribe to Blaze TV at blazetv.com slash Chad. Use promo code Chad. Save on an annual subscription. Uh, Sarah and I, we're going to finish this episode. Oh, we're going hard into overtime. It, what? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean it like oh, that. Oh. Maybe I did. I don't know. Maybe well, you'll have to tune in and find out. Thanks to, thanks to Dr. Whips, I'm going hard everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> He's not an erection doctor. I He's promise. not an erection doctor, but he helps. <laughs> I've told you before, he gets me on that high T. All yeah. the dumb stuff I've ever done in life was on high T. I need low T. Well, then, yeah, then, but then you don't need an erection doctor because if you have high T. <laughs> this thing, it's, it's, like a, it's like a divining rod. It just points me to moisture. <laughs> oh, God. You ever done any water witching? <laughs> this is the longest minute of my life i want to watch you just look how red you are <laughs> holy shit this is like lsd right here this is better than a trip <laughs> this is better than a trip Woo! all right y'all hang tight we'll be right back <laughs> All right, watchchad.com is where the fun stuff is. Uh, yeah, if if, uh, if you're out and about this Saturday night, come hang out with us in uh, Godly, Texas, Del Norte Tacos. DFW, I, listen, I got some fun shows that are coming up that that like looking farther out. Like we're back at Arlington Music Hall. That's always fun. I Arlington love Music that Hall, menu. and that'll be December 21st for the Christmas show. Uh, I got some, uh, we always have uh, musical friends that come mm-hmm. and show up for that. Like, uh, our our buddy from uh, Three Doors Down, he was there at the last one. We we've got some fun stuff that happens at that show, but uh, it's gonna sell out. So they they're telling me they're like we gotta sell tickets. I'm like it's December. We got a minute, all right. I'll, but I'll be there. Yeah, you'll be there. But go get your tickets and come to the Christmas show because it's always a full house. And uh, I'm gonna do something that I've never done before. I'm gonna read my night before Christmas rendition at this one that I've never done publicly because it's so controversial. What? So, so you've never heard it. It's so controversial no. about the gay Santa Claus. <laughs> Wait, what? And just, I'm going to read that to the audience on December 21st at Arlington Music Hall. And, I've never even heard this. Uh, it's I sent it to Larry the Cable Guy, and he said, brother. <laughs> <laughs> I said, Larry, I know you can't. Larry's real name is Dan, Dan Whitney. I said, Dan, I know you can't use it, but give, give it to somebody who can because I can't use it. Yeah. And he goes, bro, no one, no way. <laughs> I'm going to do it. Anyway, overtime, we love you. God bless you. We'll see you there. Bye.